Good evening and welcome. Tonight, North East Development Commission, NEDC, donates relief materials to internally displaced persons in Adamawa and Taraba states as Governor Darius Ishaku laments the plight of Taraba farmers over the loss of their farm produce to flood. Federal government dismisses report of selective treatment and part salary payment to members of the academic staff union of universities says the lecturers were paid based on a pro rata basis for the day from the day the strike was called off. The advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, asked President Mahmoud Buhari to order the payment of full salary to ASU members the same way he did for members of the National Association of resident doctors in 2021 after they called off their industrial action. And Tanzanian plane crash lands into Lake Victoria, killing at least 19 persons. The tale of woes for farmers in Taraba State uh, who have lost their produce to the ravaging flood. That's according to the state governor, Darius Shako. Governor Shako was speaking while receiving food items and other relief materials donated by the Northeast Development Commission to farms, farmers affected by the disaster in the state. The governor re echoed the sentiments in many quarters that this year's floods have been the most devastating. <laughs> Residents in Taraba State struggling to salvage what's left of their properties after the flood disaster that hit many parts of the state. Large expanse of farmlands have been washed away by the flood, leaving farmers with huge losses. According to the 2022 National Flood Data for Taraba State, 57 persons lost their lives. Over 142,000 people were affected, with over 6,000 others displaced in the state. However, respite seems to be coming the way of the state as the Northeast Development Commission is visiting Governor Darius Ishaku with food items, which the managing director of the commission says comprise 34,000 food and non food items as he also discloses plans of interventions by the Commission in Taraba State. We are going to do some projects here in Taraba. We talk about housing, the mega schools, ICTs, and some facilities in health and education institutions, both states and parallel. Appreciative of the gesture, yet concerned about the impact of the flood, Governor Darius Ishaku speaks on the plights of residents in the state, particularly that of the farmers. This is the worst flood we have witnessed in recent times. Just yesterday, I can't remember who was telling me that somebody was threatening to commit suicide because he sank more than 40 million on his rice farm and that rice farm has perished. And this is just one person's story. That if you actually visit the site, you will indeed notice that there is a sorry story to tell in Taraba State and in other states of the country. We had sent some relief materials earlier on, but this will help us uh, to boost our assistance to the victims. Outside the executive chamber, a symbolic handing over of the items is done, which includes 10,000 bags of rice, 5,000 pieces of blanket, 5,000 pieces of mud, 3,000 gallons of vegetable oil, among several others. And just like in Taraba State, the NEDC team also visited Adamawa State for the supply of relief materials for victims of flood disaster there. The state government commends the NEDC for the intervention, which it says will go a long way towards cushioning the hardship experienced by those affected by flood disaster in the state.
Adamawa State has been badly hit by flood waters released from the Lagdo Dam in the Republic of Cameroon and torrential rains with farmlands and houses submerged, communities displaced and deaths recorded. <laughs> In continuation of his intervention activities of assisting victims of the recent flooding across the northeast states, the NEDC is in Yola, the Adamawa state capital, to donate relief materials of food and non-food items to some affected communities. Governor Umaru Fintiri, represented at the event by the secretary to the Adamawa state government, Bashir Ahmad, arrives at the NEDC warehouse in Yola and is received by the managing director of the commission, Mohamed Al-Ghali, and other officials. The high point of the ceremony is a symbolic handing over of relief materials and a list of items to the state government by the NEDC. The managing director of the NEDC speaks on the essence of the donation, just as the secretary to the Adamawa state government appreciates the gesture, promising judicious distribution of the items to the flood victims. We have 10,000 bags of rice, 25 kg. We have blanket, uh, uh, 5,000 pieces. We have mats, 5,000 pieces, and we have vegetable oil, 3,000 gallons. We have raffas, 5,000 pieces, uh, raffas for women, um, uh, shada, 3,000 pieces for men, and children wears 3,000. We are greatly appreciative of your efforts. We thank you so much for standing by our affected citizens at all times. You've always been with us and you've always acted timely. According to the Adamawa State Emergency Management Agency, 254 communities in 12 local government areas housing 179,000 individuals were affected and 51 deaths recorded in the state. The NEDC assures the state of close collaboration to find medium-term solutions to the flood problems in the state in order to mitigate its effect on the people. And now to the problem with the university lecturers. The federal government has refuted claims that members of the academic staff union of universities were paid half salaries for the month of October, describing it as distortion of facts. A statement by the spokesperson of the Ministry of Labour, Olajide Oshudun, says the lecturers were paid proportionally because they could not be paid for work not done. A statement reads in part, they, ASU, were paid in pro rata to the number of days that they worked in October, counting from the day that they suspended the industrial action. Pro rata was done because you cannot pay them for work not done. Everyone's hands are tied. The ministry also faulted a statement by the chairperson of ASU, Usman Danfodio University Sokoto branch, Mr. Mohammed Al Mustafa, accusing the Minister of Labour, Senator Chris Ngige, of a biased payment of salaries to selected professional members of the union. It explains that those referred to were members of the Medical and Dental Consultants Association who did not take part in the eight month old strike by ASU, which necessitated the payment of their seven month withheld salaries. Meanwhile, senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, is asking President Muhammadu Buhari to override the Minister of Labour and direct the payments of the full salary of each lecturer from February to October 2022, as he did in the case of the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors in 2021. A senior lawyer who gave this position in a statement as the federal government will be accused of engaging in selective application of the no work, no pay principle if it does not pay the lecturers in full. A statement from him reads, As Su recently called off its eight-month-old strike in compliance with the order of the National Industrial Court and the Court of Appeal, but therefore compelled to call on President Buhari sh should ignore the advice of Dr. Ngige and direct the public universities to pay the full salary of each lecturer from February to October 2022. Mr. Falano further argues that since the federal government is mandatorily required to treat all workers equally, the members of us were entitled to be treated like members of the NARD after they had called off their strike. At least five persons have been killed in a clash by two cult groups in Ahwada area of River State. A police in a statement by spokesperson Grace Irige Koko said the clash which happened in the early hours of today appeared to be 
a fight for supremacy by the groups known as Icelanders and Greenlanders. The police spokesperson identified two of the deceased as 36-year-old Chukujaku Kingsley and 23-year-old Chibike Thangod, while the other three are yet to be identified. Police say tactical patrol teams have been mobilized in the area to restore normalcy while investigation into the incident is ongoing. Channels Television gathered that the rival cult groups clashed near an attendant displaced persons camp in Ahada town, headquarters of Ahada East local government area of River State. The air components of Operation Harinkai says it's recorded another victory against insurgents with the clearing of Iswa Boko Haram enclaves within the Lake Chad region in Abadam local government area. A statement from the Nigerian Air Force says similar strikes were also conducted at Unguri Gana in Bama local government area in Maiduguri after intelligence revealed that a group of ISWAP insurgents were spotted conveying heavy artillery weapons. Now, although NAF did not give the names of those killed, the statement they released said the path to victory in the northeast and northwest remain on course and the military will not relent until all locations are free of terrorists and insurgents. We're staying with security, though the Nigerian Army 34 Artillery Brigade, Obinze in Imo State, has launched a military exercise codenamed Operation Golden Dawn 2. According to the Brigade Commander, Brigadier General Sani Suleiman, the exercise is aimed at checkmating activities of bandits, criminals that neutralize all forms of criminalities in the state, especially during the Yuletide season, which is just around the corner. Flagging off the exercise in Olu town, the Imo State Governor, Hope Zodima, says the exercise will go a long way towards sustaining the peace enjoyed in the state. Governor Hope Uzadima of Imo State, the Commander 33rd Telegate Obinze, and other top army officers in our Lul local government area to witness the launch of Operation Golden Dawn 2. With the Yuletide just weeks away, the military is ensuring boots are on ground to check and curtail the activities of criminal elements in the state and the region. The Nigerian Army has continued to conduct internal security operations and exercises to combat criminal activities bedeviling the country. In recent past, the Southeast and Imo State in particular has experienced a rise of security challenges ranging from kidnapping, armed robbery, assassination, banditry, and insurgency, among others. In its bid to curtail this criminal act and ensure relative peace in the entire Southeast region, particularly during the festive period, like of the exercise, no, in line with Army Headquarters that. Governor Zadima commends the Army for being proactive in ensuring the security of lives and property. The Nigerian Army, in their wisdom, initiated and conceived the Operation Golden Dawn. And this exercise is coming at the most appropriate time. It will encourage our brothers and sisters who live outside Imo State to come back home, knowing fully well that the Imo State is not secure. If we cooperate with the Nigerian Army as citizens, give them the necessary support, we will have a very peaceful Christmas. <laughs> The governor and his host go on to inspect some of the facilities here. As these combat-ready officers hit the ground running, the people of the state expect to see activities of criminals curbed to the barest minimum. In part two after the break, it's political season as the presidential candidates of the African Action Congress, the Social Democratic Party and the African Democratic Congress continue to sell their agenda campaigning towards the 2023 general elections. That's in a moment. We'll join us again. back if it is joined us watching the news at 10 live on channels television lagos here's a reminder of our top stories 
North East Development Commission, NEDC, donates relief materials to internally displaced persons in Adamawa and Taraba states. As Governor Darius Ashako laments the plight of Taraba farmers over the loss of their farm produce to flood. Federal government dismisses reports of selective treatment and half salary payment to members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities. It says the lecturers were paid based on a pro rata basis from the day the strike was called off. Senior advocates of Nigeria, Femi Falano, asked President Mamadou Buhari to order the payment of full salary to ASU members, the same way he did for members of the National Association of Resident Doctors in 2021 after they called off their industrial action. And Tanzanian plane crash lands into Lake Victoria, killing at least 19 persons. Staying a bit more with politics, the founder and chief executive of the Center for Values in Leadership, Professor Pat Otome, believes Nigeria's current security situation is a result of not taking heed to warnings issued in that regard as far as the run-up to the 1999 transition to democracy. Professor Otome told Channel's Television's Nadi Akredilad in our current affairs program, Newsnight, that at the time, he and a couple of others had sought to alert the nation's leaders of the dangers ahead to no avail. He says he remains optimistic about next year's elections, but worries that INEC is not doing enough voter education and awareness. Nothing about this state of insecurity is a surprise. Uh, just about the time uh, the civilian government was coming in in 1999, an American called um, Robert Kaplan uh, published a book titled The Coming Anarchy. And he more or less pred predicted what we are going through. Uh, ethnic, religious, economic cleavages will come together in a way, and even gave a city in Nigeria called Jos, where it could come together in a way that West Africa could descend into anarchy. Uh, my reaction as a, uh, an engaged man was to immediately create a group which we call NUTRA. Nigerians united to resist anarchy. And part of what we did was buy books and send to people in policymaking positions to show them where our country was going if we didn't intervene appropriately. Sadly, of course, we didn't do much uh, with that poor knowledge and we're where we are. But also very important besides insecurity, and we must do everything to, to contain as much of it as possible to make a democratic process work uh, next year. A second part of the problem is the role that INEC has played in elections. Now, there are some people who despair, who think INEC can never be a fair umpire, who think INEC is an instrument used for abuse by those who have power. I choose, I choose not to despair too much. Of course, I'm not comfortable. I will keep pushing them. I don't like the fact that voters' registration is not continuing. I think that is a an invasion of the democratic right of the citizen. But INEC likes to put bureaucracy above democracy. I think that all efforts should be made to ensure that people are getting their PVC, uh, uh, PVCs after the re registration. I don't think they're doing enough. I think more needs to be done. can, of course, watch the full interview on uh, Channel Television. It airs tomorrow on Newsnight, uh, November 7, 2022, at 9 p.m. On politics now, the presidential candidate of the African Democratic Congress, uh, Mr. Dubibi Kachuku, is promising improved security, equality, fairness, and a robust economy if elected president of Nigeria next year. Mr. Kachuku made these promises at a meeting with Party Faithful in Abuja. It decries the continuous borrowing from other countries and as that it will no longer be business as usual if he becomes the nation's president. This war will be fought on our terms. We'll arm all the willing and able to rid our nation of foreign invaders. We'll take the fight to their camps to arrest, to arrest and prosecute their sponsors. We'll no longer close one flank and leave another flank open for further incursions.
the full might of the Nigerian army and the united will of the Nigerian people will confront our enemies. Our army will have clear instructions on what to do to our enemy. Our borders will be close to all those who seek to harm us. If given the privilege to lead you to be your president, my first executive interface with National Assembly will include a bill I have dubbed the Nigerian Patriot Act. It's a bill of equality and fairness. It's a bill that says we are all in this together. It's a bill that ensures that public servants cannot use the privileges they cannot provide to the common man. If you desire to be in public office, just like I desire to be, you must use the same services the masses use. Well, his counterpart in the Social Democratic Party, Adewole Adebayo, says he will create 30 million jobs using technology like crypto and blockchain while partnering with several companies. Mr. Adebayo, who was guest on Channel Television's uh, political program, Sunday Politics, spoke on why governments must prioritize social welfare for specifically designed public. Unconstitutional to neglect chapter two of our constitution, which every president is obligated to take the oath of office and say, I'm going to implement. And they do take that oath of office, including the incumbent who is there now, but he did not comply with it. So when I come in there, your money will not depend on the manifesto of my party. The spending of your money on priority will depend on complying with chapter two of the constitution, which is that we spend money on the people. Intervention. There will be no hungry man in Nigeria no hungry family. You will make sure that you give housing, adequate housing and conducive housing, proper habitat to the people. You will spend money on education, on health care, on infrastructure. Before you start to do other extraneous or esoteric luxury for the few, once that is in place, we have addressed the issue of equity. Also, the presidential candidate of the African Action Congress, Omoyele Shoure, says his government will make education free at all levels if elected as president. The candidate asks that the country has the resources and he has the knowledge to make the country's, manage the country's economy. Well, he too was guest on Sunday Politics. I keep saying this to Nigerians and I say it without, you know, with that knowledge of how they manage Nigerian economy as a journalist and individual that has fought corruption for the last 16 years, I can tell you that what has been taken out of Nigerian treasury in the last 16 years that I started Sahara Reporters, I no longer do it now because of this political engagement, is enough to have supported free education in this country or to support it for another 50 years or 100 years ahead of now. And you know, I had a video that I shared on my, uh, on my Facebook timeline. You can, people can go see it. And it's talking about the United Arab Emirates, particularly the Dubai Emirates. They provide free education for everybody. <coughs> they, even, they even pay people to get married. And we all started the same, the same oil that we're selling. So, but what we have been doing in Nigeria is corporate welfare and individual powerful people welfare. Staying with politics, some groups in Nasarawa State have joined their voices in endorsing Governor Abdullah Yusuli's second term bid. Fulani communities, youths and women groups are the latest to endorse the governor during a courtesy visit to government house. They say their reason for the endorsement includes strides in security, education, agriculture, investment, empowerment of women and youth, among others. Our correspondent, Halima Gayom, has more. Few months to the 2023 general elections, more groups continue to express their support for the second term bid of Governor Abdullah Isuli of Nasarawa State. Fulani communities in the state visit the governor to show solidarity. The 
This is coming after that of the Thief Nation, who also declared their support for the governor. Once again, Debunking allegations of unreliability, they give Governor Sule an assurance. Let me say this without fear of any contradiction, that come 2023, if there's any tribe that will totally support your re-election bid, is the TP. Security and peaceful coexistence top their list of rationales for the endorsement. A coalition of youth groups in the state add their voices, promising to deliver their various units. Two under the ages of Nasara Women for APC are assuring to support APC candidates for all positions. The show of support is a gesture Governor Sule does not take for granted. We did not go and seek for it. We did not bribe anybody to endorse us. We did not beg anyone to endorse us. We want to just do our work. I thank you for this endorsement. It's an endorsement that means so much to us. While they all give references to the achievement recorded by the governor in all sectors of development, they want him to do more when re-elected. Okay. Halima Gayam, Channels Television News. Staying with Nasarawa State, the chief of staff to the president, Ibrahim Gambari, has resetted government's resolve to ensuring food security in the country. He made the remarks when he inspected work at one of the ongoing construction sites of the country's six agricultural machinery and equipment development institutes in Lafia, the state capital. The institute approved, the president, approved by the president is undertaken by the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, NACENI. Launched on the 31st of August, construction is going on in earnest at the Agricultural, Machinery and Equipment Development Institute in Lafia, the Nastarawa state capital, as a drive to give Nigeria a production nation status records another boost. To see the extent of work so far, the Chief of Staff to the President, Mohamed Ubuari, is in Lafia on oversight to assess the quality of work at the Institute, but first, he pays a courtesy visit to Governor Abdullah Yisule. Oh, With all courtesies extended, the entourage moves to the site in spite of the time of day. For a project that barely began two months ago, the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, NACENI, highlights its drive for the speedy work. Our determination to see that January, February goes well in this place is commissioned because we have some of the machines we need to install and to use for the operation of this year. The presidency on its part commits to ensure that the project is completed in good time. By God's grace, 2022, before the end of this administration, President Muhammad Buhari, this will be commissioned and finished, so as to contribute to raising the level of uh, agricultural production and uh, value chain in this country. Not only will it um, add to our food security and uh, sustain it, but also even produce for exports. On the second day of the visit, the chief of staff, accompanied by Governor Sule, his deputy, and the Naseni team, visit the Emir of Lafia, where he re-echoes the president's vision. President Mohamed Buhari regards agriculture as something very close to his heart, because he believes the time has come when we must produce what we eat and to eat what we produce. Upon completion, the Agricultural Machinery and Equipment Development Institute will be responsible for the local development of agricultural machines and equipment for the cultivation and processing of produce. The aim is to ensure a smooth transition to mechanized farming, which will in turn boost the agricultural value chain of the country and guarantee food security. 
make a brief stopover in politics again. A group of Christian clerics from the 19 northern states of the country have said that they will still support the presidential aspirations of uh, Bola Tinubu and his running mate, Kashim Shatima, despite the Muslim Muslim ticket uh, presented by the All Progressives Congress. They say their support for Tinubu and Shatima is because they possess the qualities to address the numerous social, economic and security challenges bedeviling the country. At a meeting in Kaduna, the clerics led by Bishop Monday Yaknat emphasized the church is not against the APC, but is against the party's same faith ticket on the grounds of the, that Nigeria is a multi-religious country where religion plays a role in political participation. The ongoing conversation over the decision of All Progressives Congress APC to offer a Muslim Muslim presidential ticket continues in the wake of criticisms of this arrangement by some Northern Christian leaders. While the leadership of the Christian Association of Nigeria may have openly condemned this same faith ticket, this group of clerics from the Northern states holds a different position. Speaking in Kaduna State during a stakeholders meeting convened by the Northern States Movement for Kashim Shatima, the clerics who are drawn from different Christian denominations say although the Christian body is unhappy with the Muslim Muslim tickets of Tinubu and Shatima, they have individually decided to support the APC presidential candidate and his running mate all the same. And the purpose of this meeting is uh, to discuss with this wonderful that all the pastors from the 19th Northern States in Nigeria to discuss with us on uh, what we think about the Muslim Muslim ticket and to also express our support to the vice of the presidential candidate of the ABC. He is from the North and uh, the other aspect of it is to also Clerics promise to mobilize votes for the party. We therefore encourage our Christian faithful brothers and faithful followers to also support the vice presidential candidates of uh, the person of Senator. We told you that we are going to deliver a 16 million votes across the United States. But today, that time, I don't have the support of the 19 million persons. These clerics want religious leaders to look beyond religion and become active players in the nation's political process. And ahead of next year's elections, the Edo State Governor, Mr. Godwin Obaseki, is appealing to the media to uphold the tenets of journalism in the interests of Nigerians. Explain that this is imperative for journalists to report the truth because most electorates will choose their candidates based on information they get from the media. He was addressing the fourth convocation ceremony of the Edo State University in Esako West local government area, where he announced automatic employment for first-class graduates from the institution. The convocation lecture, Fake News, Rethinking the Role of Mainstream and Social Media in National Development, which was delivered yesterday by the former Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, Dr. Tony Iridia is apt and socially conscious, particularly as we head towards the 2023 general election. There is an imperative to ensure that journalistic ethics are upheld across media platforms and that media is socially responsible in the discharge of its activities so that the generality of people are best served with content that will cause them 
to make the best judgments in the elections and in other spheres of life. As usual, all those students, 15 of you, who made a first class in this set, you have, as usual, automatic employment into the Edo State Civil Service. So should you decide that you want to work, you have an automatic employment into the Edo State Civil Service. Your job is waiting for you. Congratulations. Health News Now, health professionals in Yobe State have described poor and distorted information on the outbreak of diseases as a major cause of mortality and morbidity, especially in the African setting. The professionals disclosed this at a training for health promotion officers on infodemic management organized by Yobe State Government in partnership with the World Health Organization in Damaturu. According to the World Health Organization, many Nigerians, including health workers, have died of unfamiliar diseases, especially in the north, in 2020, which many believe is a result of poor information on outbreak of diseases. To mitigate this challenge in the era of the COVID-19 pandemic, the World Health Organization is partnering the Yobe State Government on proper information dissemination during outbreak of diseases. The aim is to empower and remind our health promotion officers across the 17 local government areas of Yobe State on the importance of prevention and responding to prompt responding of the, uh, to the outbreaks in order to curtail uh, morbidity and deaths in our population. We know that uh, information that is correct and sound is vital in the transformation of how we approach uh, situations, especially outbreaks in our community. The Executive Secretary of the Yobe State Primary Health Care Board identifies false and poor information as factors causing more harm than the diseases. Sometimes, especially during outbreaks of epidemics, it is how the information is even managed that will determine how catastrophic or otherwise that outbreak is going to be. We all know what happened during Ebola. We know what happens once we say that we have that's a fever outbreak, or even when COVID-19 came. Most of the disabilities conferred was actually due to poor information management. Any rumor will fly. We said, ah, if one person with COVID-19 is staying within one kilometer radius of your house, you are finished. How will people not be panicking? But if you know the right thing, and you communicate this right information to the right people at the right time, you'll be able to alter behavior in such a way that people will know that, okay, yes, there are things that they don't need to panic about, but there are things that they need to take personal responsibility for. The training which attracted health workers from different parts of UBA State is aimed at building the capacity of the health promotion officers on preparatory measures to enable them contain any disease outbreak. Two Pakistani businessmen have been arrested in possession of eight kilograms of cocaine concealed in a public address system at the Muslim Mohammed International Airport in Lagos. Operators of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency arrested both suspects, Asif Mohammed and Hussein Naveed, who hold Nigerian residence permits, suspected to be fake, and are frequent travelers to Nigeria under the guise of doing textile business, while attempting to board a flight to Lahore, Pakistan, via Doha. In another operation, the NDLAA also intercepted a consignment of various illicit drugs, including cannabis and cocaine, concealed in footwear and soap packs, heading to the UAE from 32-year-old Oladitong Olufumilayo, who presented the consignment for export. Meanwhile, similar arrests were made across the country on persons linked to the trafficking of illicit substances, including pills of pharmaceutical opioids in Edo, Katsina, Adamawa, 
and Kaduna State, among others. And now to the arts. Open Studio is a group exhibition at the Welders Cathedral in Ilefe, Osho State. A sculpture's show dexterity has found objects and scrap are used to build interesting works of art. And the idea is to reduce the dirt in the environment while creating good images. And that's what we have on Art Review tonight. <laughs> with novel ideas, styles, techniques and found objects which was once trash. These group of young artists converge on the Welders Cathedral in Ilefe, Osho State for a metal sculptural exhibition. I am so happy to host uh, 10 artists in my studio today. Uh, the event today is called an open studio where uh, I give opportunity to people to visit my studio to see works that are done by my mentees. Once again, Dautungpopuala, a contemporary metal artist with a special interest in environmental decorum and the need to repurpose the large waste threatening the ecosystem, is hosting some of his mentees, giving them space to exhibit their creations. You know, these guys are putting all their energy, their time, their effort, they are putting all their spirit to, you know, to create those amazing works that they did today. And I, fi I find it uh, so interesting and uh, so happy to host them. Beyond this opportunity to learn and display their craft, these sculptors will be followed up and all the rough edges will be smoothened in order for them to become a formidable force that can go global. Most of my art, I, I, I make them to answer the questions I faced while I was growing up and I'm still answering them. For people like me who are out there that have the same kind of question, they, they can tap inspiration from my art and give themselves hope. My, my, most of my art are, are to give you hope. I use mostly binding wires, I use my binding wires. I want, to, I want to make you ask that question. I want to spot out that question. Why and what? You can question the society, you can question the things you need. And with that, you can get an accurate answer for yourself. This method of turning waste to alluring works of art shows that with the right investment and support, this is a gold mine waiting to be tapped one that can create more jobs, grow the economy, and take dirt off the streets. This is the first time I will see a single artist mentoring a lot of upcoming ones to become a greater person in the scale of this weathered metal art. The mentees with one female leading the pack has Christina Dunayo, Usama Patrick, Mohamed Jamal, Ibe Dominic, Oluafemi Ayawale, Kendi Ogunlami, David Adibayo. Joseph Alabisi and Taufik Oluwashiun all displaying their beautiful and carefully crafted sculptures in different forms and design, with each one passing diverse messages. And on the background of the sad death of Chadwick Boseman, who played King T'Challa in the 2018 superhero movie Black Panther, Director Ryan Coogler led some of the casts of the second installment, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, to a junket ahead of its only African premiere in Lagos, southwest Nigeria. Lupita Nyong'o, Winston Duke, Letitia Wright, Denai Garura, and Tinok Herter joined Kogla as they share experience from recreating the magic of the Black Panther movie with our fan favorite, Bozeman. <laughs> Battle-ready soldiers from the Dora Malaja Army of Wakanda welcome guests. Inside, mild fireworks announce the arrival of the director and some lead cast of the second installment of the Black Panther franchise, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, as they officially bring to the Black Continent Marvel's story of African excellence. Only the most broken people. back of a huge critical and commercial success in 2018 when the first installment was introduced, the director explains the pressure of racing against his own record. It was a lot of pressure, for sure, uh, but it was a little different from the first time. The first time we were working and all of the pressure was uh, internal, I would say, because uh, people didn't really know what to expect. Um, and this time, we, we were navigating folks' expectations because they had seen the first film. Um, 
and, and we're expecting maybe certain stories or, or, or uh, wishing for certain things. So what we had to do was really um, kind of close everything else out and focus on the work. Great leaders. The Black Panther storyline follows the title character, as portrayed by the late Chadwick Boseman, who passed away while the ovation around the movie was still loud. Now his team must replicate the success without him. We'd lost our brother and um, our king, our leader, and uh, that was, it, we just had a very different focus in mind. I remember when Ryan called and said, you know, we're, we're doing the second one, and I was like, oh wow, and he was like, you know, he, he was very very clear that this is what, you know, the legacy that would honor our brother. And that really, really made sense to me the minute he said it. In this film, there's, we experience different stages of grief. Uh, and the characters are dealing with the loss of T'Challa in different ways. Uh, and Nakia is definitely no exception. But we find her at a, a place where she's matured and her priorities have shifted and sharpened, but she is still the one you want to call in your hour of need. For the first time, a big Hollywood studio production brings its official premiere to Nigeria. Also present in Nigeria with the team is Winston Duke, who played Mbaku, and Tinoch Huerta, who picked up the new villain role. And at least 19 people have been killed after a plane they were traveling in crashed into Lake Victoria. A Tanzania passenger plane was said to have been carrying 43 people on board who crashed as it attempted to land in the lakeside town of Butchkova. The passenger plane crashed into the Lake Victoria while attempting to land in stormy weather at an airport in the lakeside city of Bukoba. Video footage and images that circulated on social media show the plane almost fully submerged with only its green and brown colored tail visible above the waterline of Lake Victoria, Africa's largest lake. Rescue boats were deployed and emergency workers continued to rescue other passengers trapped in the plane. Precision Air, Tanzania's largest privately owned airline, identified the plane as flight PW494 and said it was involved in an accident as it was approaching Bukoba Airport. The cause of the crash was not immediately clear, but state broadcaster TBC said the incident took place amid storms and heavy rains. One witness said he saw the plane flying unsteadily as it approached the airport in poor visibility conditions, saying it took a turn for the airport, but missed and went into the lake. The airport has been closed until further notice. President Samir Saluhu Hassan has expressed her condolences to those affected and called for calm as rescue operations continue. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres says the Earth is sending a distress signal and that the newly released state of the Global Climate Report 2022 was a chronicle of climate chaos. The report released by the World Meteorological Organization estimates that the global temperatures have now risen by 1.15 degrees Celsius since pre-industrial times so that the latest eight years were on the track to be the warmest on record. It warned of the other wide-ranging impacts of climate change, including the acceleration of sea level rise, record glacier mass losses, and record-breaking heat waves. Mr. Guterres said that in light of these findings, COP27 must be the place for urgent and credible climate action. His message comes as the UN Climate Change Summit begins at the Egyptian resort of Sham El Sheikh, where, de where delegates have agreed to discuss whether rich nations should compensate poor countries most vulnerable to climate change for their suffering. I particularly welcome the agreement of the parties to include a new agenda item on funding arrangements to respond to loss and damage. This creates, for the first time, an institutionally stable space on the formal agenda of the COP and the Paris Agreement to discuss the pressing issue 
of funding arrangements needed to deal with ex existing gaps in responding to loss and damage. <clears throat> Inclusion of this agenda reflects a sense of solidarity and empathy with the suffering of the victims of climate-induced disasters. And to this end, we all owe a debt of gratitude to activists and civil society organizations who have persistently demanded a space to discuss funding for loss and damage, and thus provided the impetus needed to bring this matter forward. Excuse me, Vice Lukochko says it is preparing for total power, heating and water outages. He was speaking in an interview in Ukraine. The power grid and water infrastructure in and near Kyiv have been targeted by Russian airstrikes in recent weeks and energy providers have resorted to planned power cuts to avoid overloads and to allow infrastructure to be repaired. He said how well Kyiv holds out depends on how well they're prepared for different scenarios. The future of the country, he says, and the future of every single citizen depends on this. Klitschko accused Russian President Vladimir Putin of deliberately targeting civilian infrastructure. He's called on Kyiv residents in worst scenario of total blackout to consider moving to emergency accommodation with friends and family who live outside of Kyiv. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has delivered the same message with Barack Obama and Joe Biden as a Republican and two Democrats campaigned in Pennsylvania on the same day. The political foes are urging all Americans in the crucial state to go vote. Mr. Biden and Mr. Obama cast the election as a battle for democracy, while Trump said the country's safety and security are on the line. Tuesday's U.S. midterm elections will determine control of Congress as all 435 seats in the House of Representatives are being contested, or 35 are up for grabs in the Senate. Nigeria's CAF Women's Champions League representative Bielsa Queens are through to the semi-final of the continent's biggest women's club competition holding in Morocco. The NWLF Premiership Champions this evening defeated Egypt's Wadi Delga FC by three goals to nil to recall their second victory in Group B. Juliet Sunday got the opener as early as the sixth minute in the first half. Messi Timmy got a brace in the second. South Africa's Mamelodi Sundown ladies picked maximum nine points in the group following a 4-0 win against DR Congo's TP Mazembe ladies. Bayelsa Queens will face Group A winners FAR Rabat Women of Morocco in the semis, while defending champions Mamelodi Sundowns will face Tanzania's Simba Queens. Arsenal have moved back to the top of the Premier League as Gabriel Mahalis sealed a 1-0 win against Chelsea after Pierre Emic Aubameyang's revenge mission fell flat earlier today, Mikel Arteta's side made it 11 wins from 13 league games, all thanks to a close range finish from Brazilian defender Gabriel in the second half at Stamford Bridge. Unai Emery secured Aston Villa's first Premier League home win over Manchester United since 1995 as they defeated Eric Ten Hag's team 3 1 at Villa Park. Miguel Almiron was on the score sheet again as Newcastle moved into third place with a comfortable 4-1 win over Southampton at St. Mary's. And the main news again. The federal government has dismissed reports of selective treatments and half-salary payments to members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities saying the lecturers were paid based on a pro rata basis from the day the strike was called off. Also today, senior, staff, senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, asked President Mohamed Buhari to order the payment of full salary to ASU members, the same way he did for members of the National Association of Resident Doctors in 2021, after they called off their industrial action. That is the news at 10 tonight. Thanks for watching. I'm Amarachi Umani. Good night.